welcome back to brush fire um we are uh normally we are a, a miniature painting stream um which we will be getting into today but it's a new year um new models new campaign you know um so we're gonna kind of start with like the basics of like building your first model um and then we'll get into painting uh so yeah um if you haven't been here before if you haven't seen us um we're mostly just here trying to paint some minis reduce my giant pile of gray plastic that i have um which got larger over the last like two weeks because i i have a whole bunch of dwarves that i need to paint now um but we're going to talk about like different types of models that you guys can do use for your role playing games dcc uh running fifth edition fantasy adventures mcc um which reminds me i need to go find some good mcc minis uh but today we're going to we're going to start from the beginning how to build your first model um so models uh plastic models scale models however you want to refer to it d d models i guess if you want to be um generic about it come in a, like a wide variety of different types. Um, we're going to be focusing on uh, one particular type today uh, before we get into painting. So m a lot of models that you'll see uh, will come in like a variety of different materials. So you can see here, uh, I have two minis. Um, I have three technically, uh, but I've got two packages. These are like fully assembled. They're ready to go i can just go plop this down on my table uh and here's my fighter or here's my spellcaster um but some some minis you know they're not uh they're not made from uh you know they're not made from this type of plastic or this sort of like material where they're a single piece uh sometimes our minis are multiple materials uh or, or multiple pieces um, most commonly, when you're when you're at your friendly local gaming store, you're going to see minis come in like the style that, that we that I just showed, um, or you're going to see them come in uh, pieces, and those pieces will usually be like two or three different materials. Um, so I wonder if I actually have a metal mini that's actually metal, and I haven't primed it already. Um, but that's all right. So. Minis that come in multiple parts are usually, like I said, um, like two or three materials. Uh, the first one is kind of the one that we all sort of think about when we think about old Dungeons and Dragons models. And that is your, um, we'll, we'll call it lead, but this hasn't been a lead mini since the 90s. Um, but these are your like metal, white pewter miniatures. Um, they can come in a single piece. Um, they are cast, so someone sculpted this, they made a mold from the sculpt, and then, um, the company that made it poured hot metal into the mold and let it cool. They pull it out, and you've got a mini. Uh, these minis are, uh, generally, they're ne they're not as detailed, um, because there's only so much detail you can get out of the type of molds that these are used, but they're good, they've got a good weight to them. Um, and, and they feel nice to uh, to use. Um, the other type of material you may occasionally see uh, for your uh, for your minis is resin. Um, resin minis, much like metal minis, can come in a singular piece. Um, you also will start to see resin a lot more with like three D printers. But you, there are companies that still will like make and sell a resin mini. Um, there's there's some like minor health concerns you have to worry about when working with resin, uh, but like once it's like fully cured and ready and on your like miniature base, it's a fine material to work with. Uh, the last material that you have for like minis that are multiple pieces are these like plastic injection molded um, miniatures. Uh, these are um, sculpted in kind of a very different way uh, than your resin or your metal minis. Um, these are like sculpted in different pieces. They're put into a mold. That mold is just like with the metal and the resin has plastic basically shot into it that cools and you get this nice um, sprue uh, of all of the different pieces. 
So these minis, traditionally you'll see these with like war games. Um, but there are a couple of like plastic miniatures uh, that are made in this style or in this in this way that are um uh that are perfect for like D D use. Um so today we're going to start with just how do you build and prep these minis. Uh, the cool thing about this is these are techniques that you can use on metal minis. These are techniques that you can use on resin minis um, or even like the uh, the like pre-primed like minis from WizKids. Um, so the big thing about these minis is there's a sem there, there's multiple parts. And so usually they'll come with some level of instructions. Um, so I've got, I've got the instructions for this and we'll talk about the different sort of like equipment or, I, uh, that we have here. So the instructions are really simple. Um, what we're looking for is now actually, let me go back a page where it's a little bit easier to see. So these are dwarf minis, um, for, uh, Warhammer, but I'm going to use them for that. And I'm also going to use them for role-playing games. So most... Uh, plastic injection molded um, miniatures will come with instructions that are generally really easy to follow. Um, you can see here that the parts are labeled with a number. Uh, we've got steps. So step one, A, step one, B. Um, this company makes uh, these instructions so that if there's similar steps, uh, but you're, like, you're using different pieces, they'll number them as like step one, A, one, B, one, C but they have the different pieces with a number attached to them. Um, sometimes they may use a letter um, depending upon the company, but you then take, you look at this. So I think actually I'm gonna have to, no, okay, I'll be fine. Um, so we have number one and number six. Uh, so I take my sprue of models um, and let's see how well this comes up on camera going to probably be very difficult. Okay, you can kind of just barely see the number two on this sprue here. So you can see number one, you can see number two. Those are the different part numbers. So for this chest piece, I'm looking for part one and part six. Um, for this step, I have part two and part seven. So I can spend a whole bunch of time looking for part uh, one and part six, but I've got part two here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start clipping these pieces out. Um, so the parts that I have can be cut uh, using plastic sprue cutters. Um, if you're in a pinch, you can use like wire cutters, but they usually will pinch the plastic, um, which can cause problems and um, ruin the pieces where the connection points are. So I have, I have a couple of different pieces here that we're going to use. Um, I have plastic sprue cutters. Um, they can be found at the same places you get your role-playing game books, the same places you can buy your miniatures. Um, they are a variety of prices. Um, the pair here on the right, I bought in 2010, um, as part of a, like, get started in Warhammer kit. Um, and then these were a Christmas gift from a friend a few years ago. Uh, it's personal preference. These have seen some wear and tear. Uh, I still use them because it's just, I, I like how they feel in my hands. But these have a nice, like, spring action. So as I close, if I let go, um, it'll just pop open. Whereas with this, I have to manually uh, open and close it because the spring part broke on mine. All right. So to clip out a piece, you're going to notice on the, the part that we want, there are connectors to the, the sprue. This is where we're going to cut. Um, now, the best way to go about this is to take your sprue cutters and line up like the flat end. Um, I can do it this way if I want it to be a little bit farther away from the piece. Um, or what I do is I try to have it go at the same angle as the connection to the, the model. Now, if you're just kind of new to this, you want to make sure that you're kind of backed away from the connection point. So we're just going to go ahead and clip this a couple millimeters away. And then we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing 
on the other P, uh, the other connector. So what this is going to do is this is going to leave a little bit of connection to the model from where the sprue was. And we can clean this up in a variety of ways. We can go back in, kind of take our, our clippers and just kind of clip that spot there. Um, that way it's free. We don't have to worry about hitting the sprue, uh, which can throw off the cut. Um, or we can take a hobby knife. Uh, this is just a utility knife that I picked up at a hardware store um, and like a pack of like 100 blades for like 10 bucks. Um, when the blade gets dull, I just get rid of it and get a new one. So the other way we can do this with either like a hobby knife or an X-Acto blade is uh, we can take our blade and put it against that connection piece and just kind of carefully cut the that part of the sprue. And I'm not going to cut yet because I just realized I'm slightly off camera trying to line up the shot. So you can see here knife blade on the like connection point at the model piece. Um, anyone that, uh, works with knives frequently, uh, will often tell you don't cut towards you because you can cut yourself. Um, unfortunately that is a bad habit that I cannot, uh, break. So I'm just going to very carefully kind of just pull that towards me and I'm trying to cut most of that, sm uh, smooth. It's going to be very difficult. Um, the reason why we want to lower this a little bit is the next piece is we're going to do is we're going to sand this. Um, but we don't want to like pull it towards us too hard because we'll gouge into the plastic. So here, let me get a piece of sprue and show you. So if I'm, I'm trying to like clip something and I dig too much into the plastic, it'll curl and I can pull off parts of the model. So like it's going to, hurt my it's gonna hurt the detail of my model it's gonna really kind of mess me up um so if you're gonna use a hobby blade to trim down your nubs um be very careful take it slow take your time um but i'm gonna go ahead and i'm just gonna clip this as well um just like with all sorts of like hobby tools from paint brushes to the miniatures themselves or to the dice that we play role-playing games with hobby tools can um uh, fluctuate in price. Um, so if you're if you're looking for something to just do this, you can get them for like twelve bucks. Um, Gundam model builders, um, they have a they have like special clippers that they use that are called God Hands, uh, which one great name. Um, two wildly expensive, but they are like flat on one end and a cutting at point on the other, so it like pinches and severs rather than taking two cutting edges and pinching them together um and that gives them a cleaner cut because their model kits have a bunch more nubs and stuff all right so once we have our nubs kind of trimmed we want to smooth that part um we want to smooth that part down so that it's flush and so that paint more importantly that paint doesn't catch on it which will throw off our detail so to do that, you can get sanding, uh, get sandpaper, um, or uh, now as you can see, I had mentioned God Hands earlier. Uh, Japan, uh, great for buying like hobby tools like this. So this is just four hundred grit sanding paper, uh, sandpaper, um, designed kind of like specifically for models. It's flexible. Um, it's got you know it's pretty good quality, and this will last me a long time. Um, if it's too much, like if it's too far gone at one end, I'll just clip it off and make it shorter until I've used the whole stick. Um, it doesn't take much. Let's see if I can get this um, on camera well. All right. So, so all we're going to do is just like take our sandpaper and just drag it across that mark a couple of times until we until it's smooth now this is not as smooth as i want it so i'm just going to keep doing that until i get it down so i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of move this and once it's as smooth as i want it 
I can move on to the next little nub. Um, as uh, as Nix, uh, who, welcome Nix. We missed you on our last stream. Um, as uh, as Nix is pointing out, the yellow part here, this is a it's kind of a foam. Um, it'll hold water for wet sanding. Um, so like you can go ahead and just dunk this in like your paint cup with clean water. Um, and it'll like they said reduce dust and particulates in the air. Uh, something to consider if you're working with resin. Um, you don't want to breathe in resin dust. You don't really want to breathe in this plastic dust either, but resin um, will mess you up more. So once these are as smooth as you want, piece is done. So you can set that aside and move on to the next step. So the next step is once you have all of your pieces out, um, is to follow the instructions on assembly. So there are um, a couple of different ways that these models will go together. Um, most of these models will uh, go together with a um, a plastic glue or a plastic cement, which is what I have here. Um, this is uh, Mr. Hobby. This is my preferred brand. Um, but again, there are tons of others on the market. Like I also have... Uh, this one might be a little easier to find. I also have um, uh, Tamiya uh, plastic cement. These are, again, what these, uh, these are both basically the same thing. They're designed for styrene plastic, which is the type of plastic most of these models are made from. And what this does is this actually melts the plastic and creates a chemical bond when it cures. The other thing that we can use to... Um, uh, the other thing that we can use to uh, assemble our models is good old fashioned super glue. Um, there are pros and cons to both of these. Um, plastic cement or plastic glue will only work on styrene models. Um, super glue will work on plastic styrene models, resin, metal, any other formula um, that minis are made from because this creates a bond to itself, uh, whereas the plastic cement will create a bond. Um, uh, with the plastic that it's intermingling with. Um, so there are, like I said, there's pros and cons. They work for different reasons. Most of the time what I'm doing is with these types of minis, um, I'll use plastic cement to assemble them. And then I will use super glue to put them on the base. Um, if you are, let's see, where is that bottle? Well, I guess we'll go with the big one. Um, super glue also takes time to cure. Uh, plastic cement, I've noticed when uh, when it wants to work well for me, um, will cure faster. Um, but plastic or but super glue also has an accelerant. Um, so I can what I do is I have a smaller bottle of this that has a spray on it, and I will either spray the part that I want to put the accelerant on, or I'll like unscrew the the spray bottle and I'll just take the end of the tube and tap it to the spot and then I'll put the super glue on the other side and then put them together and the glue sets practically instantly. Um, the accelerant uh, does create some strength problems because I'm super uh, I, I'm speeding up the chemical reaction to bond the super glue. Sometimes it doesn't it's not as strong. So uh, for my purposes today uh, I'm going to be going ahead and using the uh, plastic uh, cement. So there are tons of different like applicators, um, Games Workshop, uh, makers of these models, makers of the contrast paints I use, um, have their own plastic cement applicator um, that's a much more like a normal glue bottle. Uh, this is a brush, so you just kind of brush it on where you want and then connect the pieces. So looking at the instructions for our miniature, First instruction is to take the front chest piece and glue it to the um, back chest piece. And then they want you to glue it to the base. Um, that's because the way that these instructions are designed is you're going to like batch assemble the models because it's for a, a unit for an army. Uh, but we're just going to basically put the base on at the end. So I've got part one and part six, and I'm going to glue them together. It's really easy to do. So I'm just going to put 
I'm going to take the, the plastic cement and uh, the instructions generally give you an idea of what you are looking for on putting the cement on. But realistically, and I'll show you this with the other with the chest piece that I just cut out, is when it is together, you sh it should look like everything is detailed. So, oops, I got a dog hair stuck in here. Um. Yep. All right. So, um, all we do is we just get the glue, the two pieces, the glue on the model, the two pieces together, and then we just hold it until it cures, which um, it should start to set within about 10, 15 seconds. Um, sometimes it'll set faster. Sometimes it'll set, it'll take longer to set. So, on the pieces that we're applying the glue to, so you can see, I'm going to use my clipper here to kind of point how there's sort of like there's little spots here that almost look like they're they're peg holes um and there's also like this sort of outline of the inner parts of the part those are generally areas where you know that you can safely put the cement or put the super glue because those are not going to be seen once the model's assembled so because these are designed to uh work in like a singular uh, group. There's step-by-step -step instructions, um, but we've got all the instructions for our Iron Beard, who is the dwarf leader of this unit. Um, and he's going to be a real kick-butt uh, dwarf uh, for a DCC game. He's got a big old shield, got a big old axe, and uh, is mostly beard. So um, show you just kind of how easy it is to assemble a lot of these things. So up here at the top, he's got a kind of a flat spot for where the head's going to go. So I'm just going to go ahead, take my plastic cement, and just put a little dab up there at the top where the head's going to connect. I'm going to go ahead and take my head and just plop it on and just sort of move it around until it kind of sits nicely uh, where it is expected to go. Now this is... should... Just sit there like, oh, what the heck? Oh, I did not clean this one as well as I thought. So that's why, this is why we want to clean the parts. Um, so I'm just doing this off camera real quick. And we should... Yeah, I went with the helmeted one. So okay, so uh, the plastic cement also like will evaporate um, fairly quickly in the air. So I'm just going to apply another little dab of it, and I'm going to go ahead and put the head back on, and just kind of swivel it around to to where it sticks. So this will um, kind of stay on here. Um, one of the other things that you need, you may need to do as you are prepping the model and you're kind of cutting down the nubs and you're sanding uh, the pieces is you may want to look for mold lines. So these these types of minis are they're made from a two part mold um, that's squished together, and sometimes the models will have remnants of the of where the molds meet. Uh, those mold lines, just like with the nubs, can cause um, the mini to, or the paint to kind of catch there. So it like throws off your, um, it'll throw off like the paint job because it's catching on that and it'll mess up your detailing. Um, but these guys are actually pretty good. I haven't noticed. Um, I built about 12 or 15 of them already. Um, and there's not a whole lot in the way of mold lines, but you would use, you would clean them the same way that you would clean, um, the nubs. You use a little bit of sanding stick and you just kind of like rub the the mold line. Um, some companies make a mold line scraper, uh, or if I'm uh, if I need to, I will just use the back of my hobby knife because it's got basically the mold line scraper. It's just a rigid piece of metal, and that's what the back of my hobby knife is. So we've got his head on. Um, we're going to go ahead and apply his. 
uh, right arm. So there's a nice little divot um, on the body. And that divot is going to be where we're going to just take and just dab in the plastic glue. And then we're going to take his arm. We're going to just connect it in. And we do have a little bit of time to kind of play with how we want it to sit. So I'm going to sort of bring it back like he's looking to strike. Oops. And I'm just going to hold it there until that cement sets. Oops, his head popped off. So um, that is kind of one thing to 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 um, keep in mind is sometimes things will sit and you can kind of shake and they won't fall, but you apply a little pressure while working on another part and their head will pop off. Um, so if you've got a bunch of minis like this that need assembly, um, do them in batches. So like cut out all of the, you know, the chest pieces and the back pieces, clean them all up and then glue one and then work on the next one and the next one and the next one. And by the time you're done with like the last group, the first one should be ready to move on to the next piece. So um, his arm should be fine. His head should be fine. I'm not super worried. Um, but before we're going to let them sit because I need to attach the shield to his arm. Um, now the instructions uh, have the arm going onto the body first. Uh, but I'm, I want to make sure that the shield is on uh, before I do that, because I don't want to have to potentially fiddle with it where the, um, actually, you know what? Nope. The instructions are smarter than me. Um, I forgot that he's got these pauldrons that I need to put on. So we are indeed going to put his left arm on first. So we'll just go ahead and, again, put some plastic glue there. And then we'll go ahead and just put, whoop, head popped off, arm popped off. We're all falling apart. It's a great way to start 2024. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of clean out those areas. Go ahead and try this again. Uh, if it doesn't, um, I'll just get, I'll just clean it out, and then I'll just do it with uh, super glue. But normally, I don't have too much trouble uh, with these uh, with the plastic glue, unless it's a real fiddly piece. I was building some elves for a friend, and I about gave up, uh, like three models in to building these, like nine or ten. Because I would, they would just shatter to pieces as I was gluing them. I was like, great, cool. Uh, I'm glad that that happened. So, uh, his shield is going to go on to a very, on a very specific way. I'll come back for the the head in a minute. Um, so, there's two ways that you can go about kind of connecting these sorts of pieces. Um, if you've got um, areas where you're like, hey, this might fit, this might not fit. You can either put your gluing material onto the part you're trying to stick it to. Um, that way, you know, it should maybe find what's there and it'll stick. Uh, though in a lot of these cases, what I like to do is the thing that I'm attaching to it, I'll put the glue there because this is where it's going to make the contact. So this is more likely to find something it'll hold on to. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some glue there. Um, with super glue, you want to be a lot more careful than I'm being with this plastic glue, but the plastic glue is just going to kind of sit and, oops, ah, his arm's falling. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I had the pauldrons. I forgot the pauldrons. So we'll just go back to my original plan. Just hold that there for a minute. Wipe that up. Cry a little bit. Have an existential crisis. And we'll uh, we'll come back. We'll come back to that. Try his head again.
And you can kind of, you know, you can blow on this if you'd like. Um, I don't know if it actually makes it uh, melt and bond faster, but it makes me feel like it does. And that's all that matters when you're building models, right? All right. So while that left arm is getting gl gluing to the shield, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my uh, plastic glue. I'm going to put these pauldrons on. And as I noticed, these pauldrons are set up and that they're very specific. They look very similar in shape, but they are set up in such a way that uh, they will only go on one of the shoulders. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put a little bit into the center there. Transfer this to my other hand because that's my dominant hand and it's on this side. And we're just going to go ahead and go boink. Very technical term, boink. And get that pauldron on there. And just hold it very gently. All right. Let's go ahead and try to set this back up. Right, so we've got the shield on. We're gonna set him down very gently. Um, that's a sign of a, um, a pretty pretty stable mini. Uh, it's not on a base and it's standing up. Um, other minis not so uh, not so um, stable. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit more right there. Very, very gingerly. Whoop. Just get this. Third time's the charm, or he's just not getting a left pauldron. All right. So it's not perfect. Um, had some, had a couple of hiccups. But, uh, He's he's built. Um, at this point, he's just going to basically sit here and all of those things that were a little uh, less stable, um, they're going to get a chance to cure. And this guy is basically ready. Um, so if you can't wait like 24 hours, um, you want to... Generally, it's best if you can let these sit a day. But if you can't, uh, you may want to go the super glue route um with some accelerant so did i put the super glue there it is uh so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the super glue um this bottle is nearing the end of its lifespan but we're going to go ahead and flip him upside down and we're going to take and just put a dab of super glue onto each foot um you could put slather a bunch of super glue onto the base and then just stick them down. Um, but just like with uh, the parts where I want the thing that's gonna that I'm connecting to to have the glue, I want this to happen here. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll just plop him down right like that, and give him a little bit of pressure so that he sticks his feet to the base. And then we'll go ahead and let him cure. And our dwarf is now ready for our uh, for the first game after the funnel. Well, he's ready to get primed first. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put him here. And then, boom. Here is one that I uh, had going a little earlier. Uh, same, same concept, same basic premise um, in terms of construction. This one uh, I just built first and then... Uh, primed it, and uh, then dry brushed some white to kind of pull out his details. Um, 
We also have, because uh, I'm playing in a, uh, a 5e game this weekend, uh, it's just a one-shot for a friend's birthday, um, but I've got a, uh, a one-armed turtle uh, warrior that I'm going to be playing. So we're going to kind of we're going to work on these guys uh, tonight. Probably going to work more on the turtle uh, just because I need him sooner. Uh, but we're going to go ahead, clear off our workspace, and we will start painting. So um, I know that I had these guys uh, pre-primed uh, before tonight, um, but uh, the priming process is uh, really easy. Um, you can use uh, spray paint. Um, so like you can go to Walmart um, or whatever big box store you go to and pick up um, a cheapish can of spray paint, um, Rust-Oleum flat paint. Uh, um, flat gray primer uh, would be kind of like the lower end of, you know, you buy a can for like two, three bucks. Um, there are uh, hobby grade primers uh, that are made by miniatures companies. Uh, they're fine. Um, I use them when I'm in a pinch, uh, but I actually have been in the cold weather when spray paints are a pain in the butt. Um, this is what I turn to. And honestly, I probably should just turn to these guys, to this bottle all the time. Uh, this is brush on primer. Uh, so it's essentially just a highly pigmented black paint um, that I just put into a one of my little cups that I use, little like uh, solo sauce cup um, that I have a bajillion of. And then I just brush it on with a junk brush. Um, let that dry, let that cure, and then uh, you can start painting. Uh, Steinal Res is um, like my preferred brush on primer, but any other like miniature comp or uh, mini paint company, so uh, Army Painter, Vallejo, um, they both have uh, brush on primers as well. Um, Games Workshop, I don't believe they do, but their paint colors are all like the primers that you can buy have the same name as their normal paint line. So like you theoretically can just use their base paints uh, as your primer. So uh, this is uh, this is Barrel. At least that's his name this weekend. Um, this mini is from... Uh, let's see, what are they called now? Uh, this is from Panda Cult Games. Um, they made a board game. Uh, this was back when they were still kind of developing it. Um, the board game is called Wander, Wanderer. Um, the Cult of Barnacle Bay. Um, but this is from uh, when they were just trying to like get their ideas down. This is a young version of the character that appears in the board game. His name is Tank. He's a one-armed turtle warrior that fights with a spike shield. Um, so that's basically my character concept for this one shot. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint him up. Um, we're going to take our time, uh, mostly because he's got a lot of spikes. And spikes can be a pain to paint. Um, but I think he's got some really cool colors that we can use in terms of, like, um, his clothing, his armor, uh, his skin. And, um, yeah, we're going to, we've also, he's on a sewer base. So I'm going to probably do some green gunk in uh, the water area here, uh, which will be cool as well. All right. So let's talk, let's talk colors. So the first one that really uh, jumps out is uh, Reptilian Green. Um, this is uh, this is a Reaper paint. Um, I think we I think we considered using this, or maybe we did on the uh, the Kelpie from last year. Um, I feel like that's the the color we used on the hair. Um, so there's Reptilian Green. Um, I've got. Uh, let's see, what other greens do I have that are within arm's reach? Because I know good friend Nix has a bunch of green paints, but those are on the other side of the room. So we've got my couple colors from my favorite brand um, for hobby paints. We've got Pro Acryl. Um, 
Sorry, just gathering a bunch of these. Oh, we did Peacock Green. That's what it was. All right, so Peacock Green from Reaper, but we're not going to use that tonight. Um, I've got a Pastel Green, um, which I might use this to mix and lighten. Um, but we also have uh, Yellow Green, uh, Green, and Bright Yellow Green. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use the Yellow Green, um, and we're going to... We're going to use that for his skin tone for the time being. So that's what we're going to focus on now. Um, so we've got our wet palette. Um, this um, The wet palette will help extend your uh, your paint. Um, it basically lets um, the paint absorb water that's on the sponge through essentially a piece of parchment paper. And it keeps the paint workable for longer. Uh, without having to worry too much about um, how thin it is. So we'll shake up our paint. Go ahead and add some of that in. And just squeeze it out onto our palette. Um, and we're going to want to thin this. So uh, thinning your paints is very important to the painting process. Um, Thinning your paints lets you uh, do a couple of things. One, it keeps the details nice uh, because you're going to put several um, several layers of the paint onto the model instead of one big thick layer. Um, and um, it also lets us kind of, again, keeps it workable because we're adding water to the paint. And it also lets us kind of like combine the colors a little easier. So uh, there's a bajillion different ways that you can go about adding water to your paint. Uh, the easiest is to take your brush, dip it into your cup of water. So just kind of put it in and then take it back to the paint and add it and mix it in with the paint. What you're looking for is something that is a little thin that um, doesn't bead up when you um, when you kind of pull the brush through it, but also doesn't immediately get sucked up um, by the brush. So I, I'm not great with thinning my paints um, because I'm just, I have a lot of bad habits and it's, you know, you got to undo them over years. But what we're looking for is something that I would call like the consistency of like milk. So not too thick, not too thin. Uh, but just sort of that kind of clings to the side of the glass consistency of milk. Uh, but I've got my paint. It's uh, thinned the way I want it. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to start applying paint to our model. And as I'm doing so, um, I want to make sure that I'm like pulling the paint in a lot of cases. I don't want to like push my brush. Because uh, that'll ruin the tip of the brush. But I just want to make sure that I'm just kind of pulling the paint across the model. And it's catching on the edges that I want. It's getting into those recesses. Um, and it's not um, doing what my paint is doing right now. Uh, which is, um, looks like I thinned it a little bit too much. But that's okay. Too thin is better than too thick. Um, but what's happening is, is it's too thin, so I'm not getting a nice even layering. It's almost sort of like, I don't know, coffee stain would be like the best way to refer to it. Um, so it's just sort of staining the model um, on the area, and it's not really painting it. It's going to kind of beat up and be uneven. Um, but we can always fix that by just going back over it with other layers. So if you've got any questions about painting uh, while I'm kind of sitting here doing this, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat. Um, also, uh, because it is our first stream back, um, there is a channel point uh, redemption that you can do where you can pick a color. So if there's something on this model that is now not his skin um, that you would like me to paint in a specific color, you can redeem your channel points for that.
I hope everyone had a good holiday. Uh, besides uh, getting sick around New Year's, I had a pretty good holiday. Got to spend it with family and friends. Hopefully, uh, the Dark Lord was good to you, and you got you got what you asked for, and you got what you you needed. Yeah, we should have played more games. Oh, Nix, uh, there's a board game we have to play uh, before the first um, uh, F1 race of the year. Uh, my mom got it for me for Christmas. Uh, it is a Formula One uh, board game. And it's fun, and you can crash. But it's not Gaslands, which is also fun. Or, it's also not Dungeon Grand Prix, where you can essentially play Mario Kart and DCC. Yeah, I know, you, I know you're not big on the board games, but I gotta... I have to basically just remind myself how to play, but it's a really easy game to play. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of going over the spots that I hit first. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just creating, excuse me, uh, layers of green. And that's going to allow me to build it up. Um, there's a couple of different ways that I can handle this in terms of like building the colors. Um, I can, uh, I can do what they, uh, what the internet has dubbed as slap chop, um, slap chops. Uh, we did it on stream, uh, a while ago. Um, uh, the, um, the slap chop method is basically taking a model that is set up like this. Uh, so it's primed black. It's been dry brushed heavily white. Um, and then you use uh, speed paints, which are just basically like pigmented washes that will sort of fill in the recesses that are black and highlight the parts of the model that were dry brushed white um, so that you like very quickly uh, get something painted um, and can put it on the table. It's mostly used by wargamers, um, but you can use it as a DM or a player if you just want to get something very quickly uh, painted in uh, for your character or for monsters. Um, what we're doing here is we're taking this uh, yellow-green, and we're going to use this to just kind of build up the color on a lot of the, the model. And then what I'll probably do is I'll probably lighten it with the pastel green or maybe a little bit of white uh, for some of the highlights. Um, and we may actually use some other colors. Like I may switch to like a khaki color that I tint ever so slightly with this green um, to give me uh, like a good highlight uh, color. So like if you've ever seen like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies, like how some of their faces sort of feel or look in those movies. Good thing about this model is there's not a whole lot of skin, so we don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it. Uh, but there's kind of like two ways that we can go about working on our mini this way. Uh, the way that I'm doing here um, is uh, I'm working on one color at a time. Um, this lets me um, build up the highlights for the for the whole model wherever that color may be um and work all of the different parts of the model at the same time uh, the other way to do it is to pick a spot so like let's say his face and then do everything on the face um that way when the face is done you're not going back to it because uh, what can happen with the way i'm doing it here is i can mess up a later color 
which would require me to go back um, with earlier colors and fix my mistakes. So uh, a lot of like high, like really, really skilled, highly skilled um, professional miniature painters, they will do the other way. Um, but I do this because I like to see the model come together a little bit faster. Um, they sort of know what they're going to get with the model when they start. I'm never that prepared. A lot of happy little trees uh, wind up on my models. So I'm like, yeah, this looks good. And yes, this is a very, very turtley green. Some of this tail is going to be a little difficult to hit because that curled in part is just ever so slightly difficult for my brush to get to. Um, and yeah, it's already starting to come together. Um, yeah. I mean, honestly... I actually just kind of like how that green sits on the black with a little bit of highlight as it is. Um, but we're going to kind of take it just a little bit farther. So I go ahead and I'm going to take some of that pastel green. Um, we're going to put it over here. Oh yeah, that's that's kind of nice. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get a little bit of water on our brush, thin this out, and get it to that thickness that we want. That's about where we want it. Go ahead and clean off our brush, and then we'll just take a little bit of that thinned green, and we're just gonna mix it together, and we're gonna pull more of the more of the colors in to kind of get a halfway point. It's like this is kind of nice right there. And then we'll go ahead and just take this straight to our model. Let's see, solid yellow eyes, like Kyojin from Final Fantasy 14. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling with that. So I'm just going to use this color as like an edge highlight. So what I'm doing is I am just making sure that like on his lip here, on the like the bridge of his nose, I'm just sort of getting the very, very highest edge to just create a little bit of color contrast between that and the spots below or the spots in shadow. And this is a very, very easy way to just like, this is probably one of the, like the skills, the first skills to learn is highlighting um, because it, it lets you build color contrasts really quickly. Um, and so you can just take your brush, get those mixed colors and just and pick out the tippy tops of the model. And it doesn't look like much on camera. Um, part of that is, is like, it's still mostly that, um, it's still mostly that yellow green, but I can take a little bit more of the pastel green and mix it in. And then I can come back in and do an even like more of an edge highlight. So I can just get like even less of the, like tips and edges of his lips and i should be careful because i'm not but i should be careful and make sure i don't accidentally get under the lip like i did uh just a moment ago use my i'm gonna use my finger so i'm using my pinky um, to I was using my pinky to stabilize my brush hand 
um, against the model that or against the hand that's holding the model. Um, that way I can just like make sure that I'm not shaking and we're just putting the paint where I want it. And I'm just using like the edge of the brush to just put that ever so slightly where I need it. Oops. And you do have to be careful, just like I did here, is I accidentally got just a little bit too close to the to his lip and got a little bit of paint there. Um, but if you're quick enough, you can just wet your brush real quick and pull that off and it'll suck it back up onto the brush and you can fix your little mistake. Um, that's pretty good. Honestly, though, that's not as yellow as I kind of want for this. So I'm going to get some gold and yellow. Uh, again, Pro Acryl. Um, they are my, like, favorite brand at the moment. Um, really good pigmentation. They've got a kind of an interesting sort of matte effect to their paints. Um, sometimes it feels like it's almost chalky um with some of the stuff but thin layers and um thin layers usually help with that so let's go ahead and just take i'm what i'm doing here is i'm just taking the paint that i just squeezed out and i'm just going to mix that into the pre-mixed chunk or paint i'm just going to yellow this up until it is the shade that i want and then let's go ahead and just do actually kind of want to just get this a little bit more yellow over the whole like upper lip. So I'm actually going to thin this out a little bit more because I actually want to do it's just painting, but if it's super, super thin, um it's actually called glazing and um it basically you're just putting like the thinnest layer of paint over the part of the model that you're painting and you do a couple of layers of that and you get really good color gradation it lets you work with the colors underneath almost kind of looks like a duck now maybe this was a bad idea Yeah, you know what? Actually, I kind of like that. We'll see how this dries out. Um, see if this will focus. Focus is on my hand. My dry, dry hands and not this beautiful model. But yelling that up actually, I think, worked really well. Um, so we'll just go back to a different, slightly different color uh, to get the eyebrows again. And just just get a little bit of information or a little bit of of paint on the on that there. Yeah, that's looking kind of nice. Um, go back and do a little bit more of this yellow on the top lip because it's a little splotchy. Um, because it was the paint was just a little too thin um, when I first applied it, so it it just stained it more than painted it. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's that's looking nice. Hey, thanks for the thanks for the subscription. Um, hope you enjoy uh Goodman Games uh, uh Goodman Games stuff, and uh, thanks for hanging out tonight. Yeah, his uh his mouth does kind of make him Kappa esque, and I think that probably was a bit of an inspiration. Um, 
the uh the guy that did the art for the model um i've actually worked with him on a couple of games before um he uh he did art for a game company i used to work for um and it's kind of funny that you mentioned Kyojin uh, from Final Fantasy XIV because I used to play Final Fantasy XIV with him. Then he had to go get like a square job and stop doing cool game art. But yeah. Um, actually, one of the days, days I should pull out an item that he drew as a goof uh, for a game we worked on that was like very heavily JRPG inspired. Um and so you know how in like every JRPG uh there's like the ultimate weapon. Um we uh we made an item as a gag called the penultimate weapon. Um it was on paper it look it was like the strongest uh item or equipment in the game. Uh, but it couldn't kill. Uh, it, it So like rules wise. It was you know. It had a lot of. A lot of things going for it. But it could never like finish off your enemy models. Um, and. We made this thing look so ridiculous. Um, it had the word runes. Uh, written in like runic lettering. Um, it had a clock on it for some reason. Um, angel feathers. Um, I actually had him sign uh, a copy of the card for me because I thought it was just such a goofy idea. Yeah, basically, like yeah, the infinity, the infinity minus one sword. Um. I'm just trying to build up some gradients um, or some highlights, some color differences on the tail here. I still don't know what color I'm going to paint those little spikes that are on that tail. I might just do them in kind of a bone color. All right. So let's try. I'm going to change brushes here real quick. See if I can't get some yellow. Oh, no, that brush does not have a point at all. Oh, boy. Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and get some yellow on this. It's also, that's going to be a little bit too big. Maybe I'll put, like, a dot of black in there or something just to give him... Just to give him a a pupil. Um, but that I think that'll work for the time being. All right. I'm going to this brush out because I'll wash it at the end of the stream. I think that's kind of good on the face for the time being. Um, so I'm going to start working on some of the other parts. So he's got these pants down here. He's got a shirt and then like a breastplate. Um, I'm going to wait to do all of the metallics because, um, metallic paint has pigmentation in it, uh, and the pigmentation can throw off other non-metallic paints that you're painting with. So the, like, good, um, advice is to paint with two separate water cups, uh, but that realistically just leads to you ending up with twice the opportunity to accidentally drink your paint water. Um, so what I like to do is I paint metallics last so that I can continue to use the one paint cup that I have. And I don't have to worry too much about, um, messing up, um, other paint colors. Which is also part of the reason why I tend to work on a singular color at a time rather than a singular spot on the model. The one thing where I will probably do metals and then non-metals 
is these straps on the breastplate. So I'll probably paint the metal underneath it first and then come back in with like a brown um, at a different point, um, like completely different day, uh, just to paint the, uh, the, the leather straps there. All right, so he's got green on his skin. He is a turtle. Still don't know what I'm going to do for the back. So I think I'm going to give him like some dark brown pants. And I think I'm going to attempt to use a new paint that I got, but I'm going to mix it with a different one. So back to our wet palette. And I've got Burnt Sienna. Um, one, generally just a good color in general. Uh, two, works really well for like um, mixing. So I'm going to attempt to see what it looks like if I mix it with my warm brown. I'm going to get a slightly redder color out of it. Um, if not, I'll just go with the warm brown or the, uh, the Burnt Sienna. We'll see which one I kind of like on the model more. So uh, the Burnt Sienna is brand new, so I have to go ahead and unscrew the top and pull off the protective seal. And then to not get all of the seal off in one go. And get it off in two. Woo! There we go. Sure. All right. Go ahead, screw that back on. Get the trash out of here so that I don't get paint everywhere. And then, just like we did with the different types of greens, we'll go ahead and put like a drop down of the warm brown and put a drop down of the burnt sienna. So. One last shake for good measure. A little speck of the warm brown. Which, I love the warm brown. Uh, I use it whenever I can, it feels like. And then here is the brand new Burnt Sienna. So we'll take a look at this. So a couple drops. Go ahead and... Set that over there. And let's go ahead and thin this. And let's just go ahead and just kind of start mixing the two of them. That's kind of nice, actually. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll start on his pants. Um, this will be probably pretty simple. We're just going to go ahead and just uh, paint this. Um, I'm probably not going to do a whole lot with the pants themselves uh, in terms of, like, highlighting. Um, I'll probably use a wash to sort of create my... My recesses and my my shadows, um, not because I don't want to do more with this. I am more kind of under the idea that there's it's hard to get a brush in here, and it looks like I thinned it a little bit too much because it's not really again it's not really taking. Um, but that's okay. Thin layers, we can always we can always do more. We can't do let we can't take things away. Well, without, you know, repainting the whole model. Oh, that's more of like, it's more, uh, maybe, I don't know. It's almost more like a tunic. Or like a, like he's got the shirt, he's got something else, and then it almost looks like he, he's got either like weird galoshes or boots. Um, or these just continue to be pants. 
or whatever this is. Maybe it, actually, you know what? That's probably just a weird fold on the pants, to be honest. So just keep adding some layers of paint. And then we'll just trying to be kind of careful. I don't, I mean, everything like. The rest of the model is, you know, stuff over here is wood and metal. It's going to be brown anyways. I might just do, like, pure warm brown, or I've got a mahogany that works really well. Uh, and then we'll just do, like, a bone color for his toe claws. And I'm going to just get a little bit of the brown back here. Um it's not coming up on camera because it's basically just all in shadows down there. Um, I could honestly probably get away without painting that. Um, but I already applied some paint, so we'll just put some on there. We'll get it taken care of. And then this is really just sort of kind of keeping, sort of keeps telling me I should just do a wash with this and not worry too much about highlighting. Um, but I am going to need several layers of the paint. Uh, before I get to that point, because it's it's really thin, um, so it's it's covering, it's not covering well, um, which that's fine. Again, you can always do multiple layers of paint. So that's that almost feels like it's boot sole back here, but it's all right. Again. My motto generally is, does it look good three feet away? If so, mission accomplished. <laughs> as long as it looks good on the table, that's all I care about. I'm not entering contests. I'm not trying to win awards. Well, it does remind me. There is, there is a guy. So... Did you know that uh, in, like, the mid-aughts, there were Goodman Games miniatures? They, uh, they had a, a series of minis. Um, I can't remember who sculpted them. Uh, he's done a ton of sculpts. Um, but... They, uh, yeah, they had like a wizard, uh, the wizard model. Let me actually see if I can find it real quick. But the wizard model, um, I remember it being, um, kind of goofy. Let's see. Well, I'm just kind of letting that paint dry. Um... Ah, bummer. It's on my other on my other browser. Um, but there's like an old owl bear. Um there's like kind of goofy um like some kind of goof like goofy like PCs. Um not quite wizard with a gun, uh, because I think that's probably one of the goofiest minis I've seen. Um, but I'm hoping, hoping I can track some of those down. They are a little hard to find. Um, I even sent an email last year when I, when I discovered them, sent, uh, sent one into Goodman Games. I was like, Hey, you guys know where I can get these minis? Um, and just got back like three different responses of like, we don't know who has the license for these. Sorry. <laughs> And it's kind of funny. Um, oh, I think I found it. Yeah, Dungeon Crawl Classics miniatures. Where is this? Where is that wizard? I'm going to email it to you. If I can find it. If I can find it fast enough. Pointy Hatted Wizard. That's what it was called. Um, Just that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Copy image, uh, 
email. You can actually just copy the image straight into Zoom chat. Yeah, but I had to find it on my phone. Oh, okay. Well, the, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Carry on. <laughs> Paste. Um, so when I, I did, I did find, I did find a guy that apparently has the license. So obviously, uh, like either Goodman Games did the license based, like the sculptor had the license and they just did a couple of runs of the minis or they got rid of the license at some point. Uh, but I found a guy that says he has the license. <laughs> Um, and it's really hard to confirm because even like asking the Dark Lord, he doesn't know who has it. Um, and but like this wi pointy hatted wizard is simultaneously the best like descriptor for this mini and like not the most evocative other than what kind of hat does this wizard have? A pointy one. Um. But yeah, it's uh it's kind of it's kind of wild. Um the owl bear mini is also uh really weird. Um it's it it, it definitely gives off like those old like Ralpartha metal mini vibes. Um and uh it's uh it's kind of nice. So I'm going to see if I can find um see if I can find that guy um who has them. Oh, maybe he'll be at GaryCon and I can just buy a bunch of them there. Um, but I think once, if I can get my hands on them, uh, I think they'll make for some nice brush hours. A little bit of Goodman Games history. I think what I'm going to do for the eye, the pupil, is I already kind of started it, but I think I'm just going to go in and just do like a little dab of brown, just enough to like give it a level of definition. So let's see if it's kind of coming clear. You can sort of see it on cam at that point. Let me bring it closer. Again, it just doesn't like to focus on the model. I have to be very careful because I just noticed there's a lot of paint on this brush right now. And there we go. This is also why I don't paint eyes. <laughs> it's um, it's very difficult, and unless you're really good at it, it looks it always looks bad. Um, maybe we'll maybe we'll spend some time working on eyes sometime this year. Yeah, I think you know what? No, I think we're going to be real careful with our with the metals and I'm just going to start painting these uh these leather straps. I think when I go to paint the shield, I'll just paint the whole thing brown and then come back in and pick out the spikes in the metallic color I'm going to use. Um that'll help give me a little bit of like warmth underneath it cuz I'll just, you know, I'll have it in that like a dark brown color. Um, and I think it'll look, I think it'll look nice. All right. And all I'm using for these leather straps at the moment is just the pure, um, uh, warm brown, uh, rather than the mix of the two, uh, browns, the, uh, the burnt sienna and the warm brown. So this is just pure warm brown. We're just trying to get it ever so slightly onto all these different leather straps that Tank has. Um, and yeah, so I think that's all of the leather. Uh, so I guess we'll move on to the shirt. Um, the shirt I'm going to do with a couple khaki colors. Uh, let's see. Right. 
text colors do I want? Let's see. Do I, I want khaki khaki, right? Uh, tan skin. That's close. Uh, oh, that's a gold. A muddy brown. And yeah, too dark. Um... See, I've got skeleton bone that can do it. Um, got this is where I'm now realizing I've got like some gaps in the colors that I use, and I'm going, Oh, I wish I had this color. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Hmm. Those are close, but not identical. All right. So we're going to use the skeleton bone and this dark ivory uh, for the uh, um, for the uh, shirt color. Um, so I think, I think I want the dark ivory as my base. So we're going to go ahead and put this onto our palette first. Get an idea of what we're working with. And actually, this will give us side by side, and I'll be able to compare them. Yeah, perfect. There is just enough difference between those uh, that I don't feel like they're the exact same color. Uh, the dark ivory is a little bit darker. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with just thinning the dark ivory a little bit. Just enough, again, just kind of the consistency of milk. Maybe I'll go for spoiled milk and do a little bit thicker. Um, and then we're just going to just start painting his shirt. They're a little bit too thick, so let me get rid of some of that paint. Add a little more water. And because I really still want a oh, that's way too, way too much. Hey, good evening, Prometheus. It's a little bit too much water, not enough paint. Because it, it, I don't know if you caught it, but what happened is as soon as I put my brush to the model, all the paint left the brush. And uh, it just pooled in that little recess there. So now we're good. This is what I want it to do. It's just come off of the brush just enough that you can still see the black underneath to just kind of darken it a little bit. Well, probably what I'll do is I'll probably use a... Um, uh, probably use a wash to darken this, and then we'll do the... Uh, skeleton bone is our highlight. But we just want to get a little bit of this ivory here. Tank, you got to tuck in your shirt, buddy. I also got to remember, Tank is a one-armed turtle man. So he's got his shirt up here um, that does end... Um, not in a not in a bloody stump because he's survived the attack that took his arm, uh, but it is wrapped and bandaged, so we can do a couple things with that. Uh, obviously, I probably like if I really wanted to do contrasting with it, I would have chosen a, di a different shirt color. So what I will probably do is like dirty up the shirt and um, keep the bandages like a certain color. Like maybe probably not, you know, maybe not put a wash on the bandages. Um, or if I do kind of clean them up a little bit more than the a uh, little bit more than the uh, the shirt around it. Or I could do a completely different color. Actually, what I'll probably do is not thinking about it, is I'll probably save his shell and just do a little bit of research on like box turtles or uh, tortoise shells and just get some color ideas from that. But otherwise leave it unpainted for the time being. 
you know what, since this is going to be kind of all the same color, I'll just hit his arm now. Sorry for the weird angle, guys. Probably going to finish blocking out the colors on his shirt. Um, and that's where we'll stop for the night. It's past my bedtime. Might be uh, past for Mr. Turtle Man's bedtime, too. <laughs> he kind of yeah. looks like he's getting grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should uh should paint like the his eyebrows a little bit more prominently so they look angry. Man, he's got he's got a lot more cloth on him than I was remembering when I was like first looking at him. A whole, you know what? I think this. I think these guys might be a good uh a good mix for like an MCC game. Uh, I have a whole bunch of these like anthropomorphic guys. Uh, so you just, you know, a bunch of manimals. Um, I've got like a kangaroo dragoon. I've got like a chameleon bard, which could all be all sorts of like fun painting uh, ideas. They're all like very clearly fantasy. And I feel like MCC needs just that sort of just that little taste of uh of sci-fi if you've got something like this. Maybe I'll give one of them a laser gun. Yeah, he's coming together. Oh, actually, you know what? One more thing. I'm gonna said the claws were gonna be bone colored, so I might as well do them while I'm base coating other things that'll be very similar it's part of the reason why again i like to work in a single color at a time is it allows me to hit all of those spots that are going to be that color uh, sometimes it takes no time at all like this like i mean what five ten minutes with the dark ivory and i've got shirts base coated i've got some toes base coated um other times it can take forever uh like uh this robot i'm painting uh in my spare time um this yellow took forever and i've got a whole bunch of bronze and brass that i need to paint that's base coated so but that's uh that's a story for a different <laughs> that's a mini for a different show all right, so we'll go ahead and we'll just do, I guess we'll do his tail spike swoops in that. And we'll just kind of get them a little bit with some color, just a wee bit. And then we'll get the other side. And then I'll have to go back. I'm I'm hitting the tail with, uh, with that dark ivory and it's messing up the color in the inside of the tail but i can always go back and fix that uh it's it's going well great babe you are gonna want to watch the vod of this stream um we uh we started off today um building a uh we started off building a miniature from uh from sprue so we we took uh, pieces, parts, and made in this case a, a dwarf uh, warrior, and then we uh, we started painting a uh, a one armed turtle warrior that I've uh, I've got because um, I got a game on Sunday where I'm going to use him. So, but uh, I hope you uh, I hope you had a a good holiday, um, and thanks for like you know catching the stream. Um, all right i'm calling it there that's the last time you get to talk about holidays We're yeah all right it. perfect it's, yes. it's it's mlk day we've already it hit is. new year's it's well past no, i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> man great babe's gonna think i'm a jerk <laughs> we we'll had a whole conversation 
<laughs> will this come up in my performance review? Yes, yes, it will. <laughs> I'm going to have to dock about five cents off your uh, your oh. paycheck for the stream. I'm sorry. <laughs> wait, I get, I'm getting paid? <laughs> oh, All right. wait, you're not? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I kind of need to do here at this point. I think he's at that good stopping point. Like I got the, so I think I think what my plan is going forward. Where is it? Um, I've got this light tone that I'm going to use on the cloth. Um, and that cloth, uh, we will then work back up with like the skeleton bone, maybe a little bit of dark ivory mixed in. Um, so we'll either do the light tone, oops, or the soft tone. I think light tone, and then. I'm going to probably hit the pants in the in the leather straps with the strong tone. Um I don't think the skin needs a wash. I think I kind of built those colors up just the way that I want and there's just enough like unpainted stuff uh like on the neck to just be a little bit of green but it's still shadowy. Um and then the 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 metallics. Uh the shield's going to be like mahogany brown and then I'll do like silver, like a dark silver and then dry brush a uh, a brighter silver. And I'll do the same with the chest plate and the the other pieces. I don't know what I'm going to do for the shell yet, but that's all right. All right. So, um Huh, where did that go? There it is. So one uh one last thing that I'm gonna do. Um see Great Babe has like the best timing in that he always shows up at like the end of the stream. <laughs> um so uh we're just gonna call it there on the painting. Um and I'm just gonna do one last thing. Uh, I talked about this last year at the at our final stream, but it doesn't hurt. And it's probably something I should do at the end of every stream, anyways. Um or I'll just do it afterwards, but I want to, since we were kind of talking about start to finish, starting with the model, ending with painted, um, we got to clean our brushes. So it's really easy, um, really easy to do. You get brush soap. Um, there's hobby specifics brush soap, but this is Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. Uh, you can buy this at any art supply store. Um, I bought this years ago and it's like still the same disc uh, but it's really easy to do you get some water and you just pull the brush across the soap with some water and you get a lather going and you just do that over and over until like the lather is not gross and dirty um, and that helps preserve your brushes um, so I'm just gonna do that real quick. And it helps keep the point on the brush, helps keep the brush nice and ready to go. Uh, like I had mentioned with this brush earlier, how it's like splitting um at the tip. Uh that's partially because uh I didn't clean this in time and paint got up in the metal part. Um, so it's splitting the brush farther down. So this might be a junk brush now, but uh, this one, I, I, it's an artistic one. It's like, you know, nicer quality. So I want to take care of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and just wash my brushes real quick. Get them nice and clean. Work that lather in. And yeah. um, Go ahead and just kind of finish that off. Um, so everybody, uh, thank you for watching. I don't know if we will be back next week. I don't know what the schedule is looking like. Um, but, uh, we'll I'm good back. with you coming back next week. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if like mob Mike was on or if he had like any artist studio or in the studio. Um, nah. all right. So yeah, we'll be back next week. I don't know if I will be painting tank, uh, cause he needs to be done by Sunday. Um, but I'll be, I've got dozens of models. We'll be painting something. Uh, we'll probably um, 
build ourselves a little adventuring party. Uh, so we'll probably do like a wizard, a warrior, cleric, thief. Um, and then we'll start doing some monsters throughout the year. Um, if uh, if you want um, to potentially... Uh, I've, I've started streaming my own painting again um, on my own channel. Um, so if you want to see me do some more of this, um, maybe not necessarily all fantasy models, maybe some sci-fi models, um, you can catch me on Twitch at Traitorous Alf. Um, all one word. Uh, A-L-F, just like the alien from the 80s. Um, and yeah, I'll be painting minis over there uh, probably Wednesday night. Uh, but as always, everybody, thank you so much uh, for stopping by, watching, um, hanging out, asking questions. Um, we'll be back next week with some more minis to paint. Thank you and have a great night.